as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation, with a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. Shobhith Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, deemed to be university and its centers of excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, extend greetings to all the participants from India and abroad who are attending today's national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022, Atmanir Bharat in agriculture. On the important topic, small-scale fisheries and their contribution to rural livelihoods, case studies from developing countries. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the university and on my behalf and as Professor Emeritus and Chairman of Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Application, Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Applications, and Center for Health Informatics and Computing. Let me welcome today's guest speaker to tell, deliver the talk in the 64th edition of this national webinar series. Good morning, Dr. P. Selvaraj, Chief General Manager, Nabar. For the benefits of the participants and the guest speaker, so far under this webinar series, the university has organized about, about 63 webinars on the topics, very important topics relevant to the today's circumstances, role of agricultural cooperative societies and e-governance. It started on 18th August 2020. Blockchain technology-based fisheries value chain, a self-contained village, a felt need of the day, Spices Informatics Network Value Chain, Lantana Camera, a camouflaged treasure trove. Smart Hill Agriculture, a digitalized hill agriculture value system. Mera Mobile, Mera Marketing, Integrated Mariculture, Aquaponics, and Precision Agriculture. In short, MAPA Biofarms for Income Revolution by Professor Samuel Jnana Prakash Vincent from the Center of, for Marine Sciences and Technology, Manon Manim Sundanar University, Raja Kamangalam Kanyakumari District, Smart Tribal Agriculture, Optimizing Value Chains, Digital Agri-Tech and Industry, agri and industry Perspective, Land Resources Information System in India, Present and Road Ahead, Weather Decision Technologies, for increasing farm income, big data in smart farming, sustainable soil and land management for climate smart agriculture, understanding market dynamics for increasing farm income, role of technologies in mitigating crop risk, how to generate additional profit, profit via simple attractive approaches in farm produce, adoption of flexi Rubber check dam technology, potential benefit for farmer in rainfed and agro coastal agro ecosystem. Realizing the economic benefits of agroforestry. Closing the nutrient loop. Phosphorus management in protein farming. Improved nutrient use efficiency and farm productivity. Artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agricultural crop protection without pesticides, smart poultry monitoring solutions, agrobiodiversity, intellectual property laws, agriculture and farmers welfare and insight into the issues for Indian agrarian economy, manufacture and by application of biochar for increased soil fertility and crop productivity, sustainable integration of livestock for, with agriculture for farm income increase, role of geographical indicators, on indications on improving farmers' income, lessons from Asia Pacific region, 
Dairy Informatics Network Value Chain, a dairy tech startup perspective for farmers' income increase. Spices Informatic Network Value Chain, a turmeric startup perspective for farmers' income increase. Generating sustainable on-farm on income through fintech interventions. Nutrition-sensitive agriculture, pathway for increasing farm, farmer income. Artificial intelligence and data analytics to ensure optimal nutrition in the soil, harvested food that minimizes human disease. Artificial intelligence and data analytics to in, in, ensure optimal nutrition in the soil, harvested food that minimizes human disease. Bioenergy supply chain, business opportunity for rural enterprises and farmer producer organizations. Tech enabling India's tech starved farmers for manifold increase in productivity and income. Open insurance ecosystem for agricultural products, risk management solutions to overcome repercussions on repercussions on farmers' income, market stability, and food safety. Role of mass media for in farmers' income increase, a case study from Green TV. At stack, agriculture stack, open source digital infrastructure for the agriculture ecosystem, a Linux Foundation project. Circular bioeconomy towards resilience, urgent need for redefining raw materials and modified waste management policies and regulations. Agritech new horizon in Indian agriculture. Supporting a farmer for marketing will only help doubling of income by 2022. Rural transformation for farmers' income increase, case studies from impoverished districts. Mobile-enabled software as a service, SaaS, to solve complex supply chain challenges, a case study from daily orders. John DeRay's journey in India, integrated precision agriculture solutions, doubling the income of farmers through eco-agri-revolution. Bayer's carbon farming initiative, initiatives. Post-production intervention, maximizing value for maximizing value for farmers. Beef models are revival of traditional water management system to enable doubling of farmers' income. Should we adopt farmers' welfare as a new paradigm instead of farmers' welcome? Is ICT interventions in agriculture challenges and opportunities? Democratizing the future of farming, a global experience, commercializing processing of orders a next game changer in dairy, data-driven agriculture and agri-tech startup perspective, agribusiness potentials in Moringa, agricultural income pathway, strengthening links between agriculture activities and nutrition outcome. Technology, education, research, rehabilitation for the environment, cultivating dignity for farmers, modern village development programs, a case study from Maharashtra, Market-driven agriculture need for development of crop-specific strategies at block level. Farmers collective with value addition, powerful business model for income increase for small and marginal farmers. Lessons from Operation Flood for transforming agriculture and food systems. Sustainable food, pr food production. Agriculture marketing in India defects therein and remedial measures, if any. Today is the 64th edition of the national webinar series, which will be addressed by Dr. P. Selvaraj, Chief General Manager, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, NABAR, Government of India, Mumbai, Mumbai on the very important topic, small scale, small scale fisheries and their contribution to rural livelihood. Case, case studies from developing countries. Dear participants, please note the key words, small scale fisheries, contribution, to rural livelihoods, case studies, and the developing countries. Agriculture sector is the foundation of Indian economy. Acharya Vinoba Babe said, India is largely an agrarian agricultural country, Krishi Pradhan Desh, and a country of villages, more than 6.25 lakh villages. And agriculture is the main source of food employment in income for 70 to 80% of the people suffering from hunger in developing countries. At present, agricultural livelihoods are being severely impacted world over as a result of anthropogenic 
global warming and climate change. Fisheries is farming in water. Global climate change has both direct and indirect efforts on agricultural productivity, including changing rainfall patterns, severe drought, flooding, and changes in geographical redistribution of pests and diseases. We need to have future smart farmers. It is very essential. We have to democratize the agricultural systems. And Honorable Prime Minister, in his Independence Day address on 15th August 2021, he said, I quote, In the coming years, we will have to increase the collective power of small farmers of the country. We have to give them new facilities. They must become the country's pride. He said, Chota Kisan, Bane Deshki Shan. Small farmers become the pride of the nation. I would like to quote the doubling farmers' income by 2022, report to 2018, in which I was the chairman for two group leader group groups, volume 11 and volume 12b. Volume 12b talks about digital technology in agriculture. This volume has recommended seven mission mode projects to be undertaken to di digitalize the entire Indian agriculture sector system along with uh, on and its uh, subsectors. Digital agriculture, digital technology and innovation in agriculture in the form of smart irrigated <coughs> farming, smart rainfed farming and smart tribal farming. Digitalized agromet advisories and agricultural risk management solutions. Digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming. So digitalized value chain for about 400 agriculture commodities. Digitalized access to inputs, technology, knowledge, skill, agricultural income, finance, credit, marketing, and agribusiness management to farmers. Digitalized integrated land and water management system per drop more crop. And a digitalized farm health management for a reduction of farmers' loss, which includes farmers' health that is public health, plant health, animal health, fish health, water health, and environmental health. It is very essential. 85% of the disease which the common public get are from animal. COVID-19 is one such thing. So it is very essential to have a adoption of artificial intelligence, big data analytics on human health data, plant health data, animal health data, fish health data, water health data, and environmental health data. It is, it is essential and it is a trillion dollar data economy. Nowhere else in the world they, would like, they are having a, an integrated approach for data analysis. If this is done and Government of India through its doubling farmers income by 2020 report, it has endorsed that the country needs to have an integrated farm health management systems who listens and uh, and and it is you know it is it is a data gets generated these are all vertical silos and through artificial intelligence gas technology and big data analytics this country can be the first number one country in the world to bring in data analytics in integrated farm health management we can be the leader and atmanirvar bharat is the mission of the prime minister Shri Narendra Modi of making India as a self-reliant nation rested on five I's, indent, inclusion, investment, infrastructure and innovation, based on five pillars, quantum jump in economy, infrastructure, one that represents modern India, systems 21st century technology driven, vibrant demography and a demand whereby the strength of our demand and supply chain should be utilized to the full capacity. In the third trench of Atmanirbar Abhiyan, the uh, you know, agriculture sector got about 1.5 lakh crore as a booster. And in which 20,000 crores for Prime Minister's Matshya Sambada Yojana to pay way for additional fish production of 70 lakh ton over five years. 70 lakh tons over five years. Amrit Kal 
led up uh, led up to at 100 that is an 25 years long term plan from india at 75 to india at 100 how we are going to you know bring in small scale fisheries you know to improve the livelihoods in the rural area you know it's very important and and the government through the United, you know, unions, you know, finance minister's budget speech, it has given a blueprint for Amrit Kaur, which, which has one component as inclusive development, agricultural sector through its subsectors is also is one of the important component. PM Kadi Shakti, inclusive development, productivity enhancement and investment, sunrise opportunities, energy transition and climate action, financing of investment. It is a complete, you know, package. And how we would like to use this, you know, the uh, the four priorities is very important. The four priorities in the fisheries sector during the next 25 years. And and the, the, the speech talks about blended capital. It's a mix of government or non-profit grants, equity investment, and bank loans put the put into a startup so it is a it is it's paving the way for establishing you know umpteen number of startups in fisheries sector my interest is that how to convert 22000 primary fisher cooperative societies into fishery startup in no time and and that is, is an important thing that rural india is a powerhouse with the potential to add 1.8 trillion or the equivalent of the current GDP. And this is said by the former chairman of Hindustan Unilever Limited, Mr. Harish Manwani in 2012. Till now it is valid. And fisheries informatic network value chain is the need of the world. This is what I have been driving for the last 30, 40 years. When I was the project director for the district information system, for the whole country for 512 districts in, in two, 1987 when the NIS was asked to establish NICNET and district information system of the country for informatics revolution. The district information system of NIS was considered as a district informatics, government informatics program. It talked about 28 database development program and village level database development program and which fisheries informatics network was one of the important components, sectoral database. And uh, 95, and I was given the agriculture sector. I had a national conference on informatics for sustainable agriculture development, and which which gave the 15 informatics sub network blueprint for agriculture sector. It is the beginning of informatics revolution in the agriculture sector, which brought agricultural informatics as a separate discipline to draw inspiration and theoretical and the operational models into you know agricultural informatics like agricultural economics and agriculture statistics agriculture informatics is an important discipline which has emerged and i was instrumental for that in the country and uh, under this webinar series so fisheries informatic network value chain is an important thing it is a perishable commodity adoption of technology is very important fisheries informatics value chain if well, if 22,000 primary fisheries cooperative societies are involved, it has got a members of 33, you know, lakh. If 33 lakh people are involved in fishing activity, it gives an employment opportunity of 66 lakhs people. It means that, you know, it is a 1 is to 2 ratio. Uh, it means that it, it is an opportunity for 1 crore employment in the fisheries sector. And then, you know, startups and so on and so forth. Under this webinar series, the university has organized three webinars. One is on role of agricultural society, cooperative societies and e-governance. And then blockchain technology based to fisheries value chain, integrated mariculture, aquaponics and precision agriculture, MAPA biofarms. It can, you know, come up throughout the country. And we also had a national workshops along with various NGOs who have signed an MOU, that is equal from, you know, uh, you know, Northeast. And on that webinar series, you know, the, according to Dr. P.K. Das, the director of SIFRI, 
Central Inland Fisheries Research Institute. Inland fisheries has been a neglected sector so far. And only 40% of the retail price go to the fisherman because of the exploitation on the part of middleman. And therefore proposed an e-marketing as a solution. He said it that is on 7th November 2019. Under the COVID-19 stimulus program, central government on May 15 approved an outlay of 20,000 crores for Pradhan Mandri Matsya Sambada Yojana to strengthen establishing robust fisheries management framework. Robust fisheries management framework. And check gaps in the value chain. And also 10,000 crore scheme for formalization of micro food enterprise. Fisher, fisheries can facilitate establishing micro food enterprises. During the COVID pandemic, the university has organized a series of virtual meetings since the 16th April 2020. In view of COVID-19 situations in India, the stakeholders as have been discussing the, for developing a sustainable fisheries value chain from Andhra Pradesh, inland fish for Assam in northeastern region as a pilot project. The value chain will be facilitated through an ICT cloud based system we using blockchain technology for traceability. It will have a supplier, seed production, grow out, primary processing, secondary processing, distribution and wholesale and retail. Fishing zones in India included marines and inland. Marine fishing zone comprises of coastal line 8,118 kilometers. Continental shelf 3,72 1424 square kilometer and exclusive economic zone 2.02 into 106 million square kilometer inland fishing zone comprises of river river length 1.95 lakh kilometers reservoirs 31.5 lakh hectares tanks and ponds 24.1 lakh hectare wheels Oxbow lakes and derelict water 8.12 lakh hectare and brackish water area 12.4 lakh hectare as per the published documents from the Department of Ministry of you know, Anim Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairy. Inland fisheries play a greater role in nutritional security and livelihood opportunities but remains largely unorganized due to scattered and diffused nature of activities. Rivers, streams, lake, stream, lakes, reservoirs, tanks, ponds, irrigation, canals, multipurpose dams, and paddy fields provides an immense scope of inland fisheries development. Inland fisheries highly preferable in the state of northeastern region, West Bengal, Bihar, Odisha, and Madhya Pradesh. There is a huge hidden demand existing in the country. Haryana is becoming one of the very important inland fisheries you know, stations. Stakeholders include fishery, fish farmers, fish cooperatives, traders, supply chain participants, and retailers. 95% of the Assam state population consume fish. In India, there are about 8 lakh cooperative societies, of which 21,741 societies are primary fisher cooperative societies. They have national federation, state federation, regional federation, district federation and primary official societies and the members 33 lakhs 53,115 members challenges in the value chain modern supply chain must evolve to meet new demands supply chain challenges the supply chain managers need to plan ahead to keep everything flowing smoothly development of infrastructure logistic cloud chain cold chain support strengthening of supply and delivery chain in demand side, NGOs, they are the livelihood opportunities generators. And cooperative societies are stakeholders in fish marketing. I do not know how vibrant they are now. Identification of products, single product or multiple products. Handling, handling, hand holding support to cooperative societies and farmer produce organization through training and financial support for marketing of inland fish. Issues related to handling, storage, traceability, toxicants, and certification and HACCP. 
issues regarding choices of species, appropriate technology, pricing, and economic viability has to be decided after the basic framework is put in place and decided. Support of local bodies to overcome mafia problems. And appropriate technology inputs will be required at pre-production, production, and post-harvest and marketing. And fisheries entrepreneurship and skill development program for migrant workers return to home state to enhance their livelihood opportunities. Central budget 2020-21, uh, you know, focused on organizing 500 farmer produce organization in the fisheries sector. We expected that the establishment of 500 and primary the fish farmers produce organization will be given to the Fisheries Cooperative Federation. But unfortunately, it has been given to National Fisheries Development Board. Pradhan Mantri Matcha Sambada Yojana is aimed at bringing about ecologically healthy, economically viable, and socially inclusive development of the fisheries sector in India. So this has to be understood in every fisherman village through the 22,000 fisherman cooperative societies in the country, both the coastal area and inland. Inland fishery, fish marketing is diffused and largely unorganized, but marine fishery is more organized and linked. That's why it is needed that inland fisheries needs to, need, needs to be under a federal body, such as you know, inland fisheries development authority in line with the marine fisheries export development authority for you know and domestic fish marketing is neither efficient nor modern and mainly carried out by private traders you know with many intermediary intermediaries between producer and the consumer thereby reducing significantly the fisherman's share in consumer as a price it is essential to have technology linked to market rooted through organized channel span India so as to tap the huge untapped potential lying in the sector. This is where fisheries informatic network value chain is important. This is what the Center for Agricultural Informatics and e-government research studies and Center for Agribusiness and Development Management Studies is of the Soviet Institute of Engineering Technologies interested to train, skill, reskill, upskill of the sons and daughters uh, and the fisheries, the uh, graduates of fish, uh, bachelors in fishery sciences and masters in fishery sciences get into fisheries informatics as a preferred op opportunities. And I also would like to quote on 7th October 2020, the university has organized a stakeholders meeting in terms of in respect of fisheries informatic network, fish blockchain technology project. We talked about luxury. Lakshadweep and Andama. And Lakshadweep is rich in fishery resource and main fishery resource in the islands are tuna. And its estimated potential is about 1 lakh tons of tuna and an equal quantity of shark. But the present potential capture is only 5%. And why the government of India, the Union Territory Administration is not looking into it. Scandinavia, in the, in the, 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 the Dutch countries, they're all, you know, rule the whole world through their fisheries, you know, uh, you know, uh, value chain. New Zealand and Fiji Islands are, you know, you know, you know, ruling that through their fisheries value chain. Why the fisheries resources in India is not, you know, getting into the, you know, the international market and we are able to have only 5% of the potentials are being captured. And it can bring all our people, it can generate a lot of employment opportunity and wealth generation and in India can become, in you know, the regions can become wealthy. And Professor Bhaskaran Mara, Mani Maran, former Vice Chancellor, Tamil Nadu Fisheries University said, Tuna is a very important fishery resource in the exclusive economic zones of Maldives and Sri Lanka. Developing a Tuna fishery value chain for Lakshadweep Islands is a necessity. Are we ready? Dr. K.K. Was, former director ICAR, Sifri, when he participated, he said that the Hilsa shark is, is the most prized edible fish, rich in omega fatty acids and consumed by more than 250 million people across the globe. 
This is available in Bay of Bengal. So in Bay of Bengal, and we can have from eastern side, we can have a you know Hilsha Shat fishery value chain. So this is two important project which Soviet Institute of Engineering and you know Technology deemed to be university in association with the various fishery fish corporate. They have also signed an MOU, and along with the NABARD and various NGOs, you know we would like to have this value chain operational. One from this eastern side, one from the Arabian Sea, one from Bay of Bengal, and from inland fisheries value chain. And this, and then Gangadhar Garnam, an entrepreneur from Andhra Pradesh, he said that aquaculture traceability is the need of power. It's being rejected. And the blockchain technology will help it to solve this problem in aquaculture model. And this he said that, and Many people say that Andhra Pradesh is using formalin, but we don't use formalin. So blockchain technology is very important to find out who is mixing formalin in the aquaculture value chain when it when this reaches Gohati. So this and Mr. Nallakannu, seafood exporter from Chennai, he said that fisher fishery is a supply constraint proposal. Would be it would be having evergreen demand if processed, packed stored logically connected to the marketable areas for from the catching area this requires government funding infrastructure policy related support not from down top down but bottom up process and traceability is he says that traceability is already there in one form or other but the the blockchain based traceability is a very important thing and in the, you know, we had an international webinar. Why I'm saying that it's a very important talk so that, you know, that, you know, Dr. P. Salvaraj will be in a position to respond some of the recommendation during his address, you know, 60 minutes address. Proceedings of the international webinar series on post-COVID-19, doubling farmers' income by 2022, role of agriculture cooperative societies and e-governance, which started this webinar series on 18th August 2020, was addressed by Dr. Ashok Dalwai, the chairman of the Doubling Farmers Income by 2022 Committee, in which Mr. P.K. Mishra, former managing director of Fish Cooper, said, throughout the whole world, we are culturing water for both agriculture and fisheries, and also culturing soil for agriculture. And 70, you know, and 70 percent of the of the world over, water has been found where both capture fisheries and culture fisheries are undertaken. From Indian fishery statistics, marine fish production is 4.17 million tons. Inland fishery production is 9.38 inland million tons. It exports Indian rupee 46,589 crores. And potential production by 2025 is 22 million tons. And per capita consumption is 5 to 6 kg per year. Productivity is 3 tons and post-harvest losses are 20 to 25 percent. How to reduce that? And outlay of Pradhan Mandri Matshe Sambada Yojana is about 20,050 crores. And outlay for fisheries informatics development is 7,522 7, crores. What is small-scale fishery? FAO has defined small-scale fishery or artisanal fishery, artisanal fishery as traditional fisheries involving fishing house code as opposed to the commercial company using relatively small amount of capital and energy and relatively small fishing vessels making short of fishing trips close to shore mainly for local consumption small scale fisheries often referred to as artisanal fisheries are responsible for nearly half of the global seafood catches small scale fisheries is incredibly important to global food security livelihoods and well-being of many fisher folk in india prior to the introduction of mechanization in 50s the entire marine fish production was by the small scale sector the important need of the hour is a proper management of small scale fisheries with definite objectives after 26 11 mumbai terrorist attack the government of india digitalized all the fishing vessels of the country under the project real craft Department of Animal Husbandry, Dairying and Fisheries and National Informatics Center did it. I was the project chief. This database has become 
as a marine object objects for sea administration from national security point of india national informatics center trivandrum has under the project leadership of shrimati kasturi has done this wonderful job of creating a real craft a data, you know database program for all the fishing vessels marine fishing vessels and now the security forces are using this as a marine object and this can be traced and we also proposed that when the crew members getting into the fishing vessel after the kerosene sub, you know is got into the boat they can be given a boarding pass and one of the boarding pass is given in, in this day the, who has gone into the fishing vessel will be known to all the authorities if there is a omi uh, you know cyclone or any other cyclone we know that who is in the sea but as of now we do not know who is in the sea traceability is in, is a very difficult process and i through this webinar series the proposal which is given to the government in 2012 that the the boarding passes for all the crew members who get into the fishing vessel after getting the kerosene from the concerned state government bodies that fishing this boarding pass can be printed in water you know you know uh, resistant method and they can they can wear it on their hip in the body and when they when they land back this can be given to the landing station and that's how we update in the database and it's a very important thing and for the last you know 10 years this is not happening when there is a cyclone when there is one the the ladies of the fisherman house comes to the government say that my man has gone into the sea he has not returned back in the era of digitalized world why can't we create this type of databases and the minute there is a disturbance in the sea all the you know authorities can be alerted and who is in the sea in which which boat is in the sea and which area where they have got the license and it can go to the hot spot this is how we should do that and uh, i appeal to the all the participants and the government authorities and who are associated with the fisheries value chain do this bring out the boarding pass system to the crew members of the fish, fishing vessel after they as soon as they get to the kerosene for their boat from the government state government this has to be done so this is is a small scale fisheries are the best hope and for sustainability in developing world this is what is told by jeremy hans i quote from his you know you know uh, website you know from her blog from his uh, you know from the author's blog which is written on september 8 2018 with this background let us now turn to the address by dr p selvaraj chief general manager national bank for agriculture and rural development government of india mumbai on the very important topic small scale fisheries and their contribution to rural livelihood case studies from developing countries this today's topic will motivate and galvanize the participants watching over telecast through facebook.com sobit university india youtube.com oblique sobit university in or linkedin.com slash company slash sobit university for establishing fish tech startups fish tech startups in all 22000 fisheries co primary fisher cooperatives at the grassroots level let me introduce our guest speaker to the audience let me invite the guest speaker to address the webinar series profile please mr manish dr p selvaraj is the chief general manager in nabar head office mumbai he is with nabar for the past 32 years in various capacities in the state and worked in the states of kerala assam tamil nadu and maharashtra he is a member in various national and international association like asian fisheries society philippines industrial fisheries association kochi inland fisheries association mumbai mangalore management association etc he has 20 articles 17 technical papers and two international review papers to his credit dr selvaraj represented india in fao and asia pacific rural and agriculture credit association round table of microfinance in aquaculture and fisheries and presented the country paper in cebu islands of philippines in 2004 he also visited mauritius philippines singapore malaysia germany for official engagements 
He has vast experience in consultancy assignments and was national level coordinator for many projects like capacity building programs, area based projects in fisheries for state governments. Fellowships and awards received, ranked fourth in the country and got junior fellowship award by ICR 1984. Best Performance Award by Tutukudi District Administration for Self-Help Group Promotion in 2002. Best Performance Award by Trichirapalli District Administration for Promotion of Small-Scale Industries 2004. Best Role Model Officer of NABARD in Tamil Nadu. Birds Award Best Case Studies and NABARD Chairman's Award for Best Paper Publication in 2018. Appreciated Certificates from Director National Institute of Bank Management and College for Agriculture Banking. Dr. Selvaraj Gold, uh, holds Bachelor of Fishery Science and Master of Fishery Science from Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, Doctorate in Fishery Science from Gohat University, MBA from Periyar University, Salem, Certified Associate of Indian Institute of Bankers, Design of Training and Di Director train Trainer Skills from Administrative Training Institute, Mysore, and PG Diploma in Yogic Sciences from Anomaly University, and Certified Bank Trainer from IIBF. He delivered talks in AR Trivandrum. All India Radio, Tirushrapalli, and more particularly live phone in program and contributed as members in the committee of farm school in All India Radio station. All India Radio. He has delivered special lectures in RBA, Karnataka Bank, Bank of India, Corporation Bank, Vijaya Bank Staff College, Symbiosis Institute of Business Management, AJ Institute of Management, St. Joseph Engineering College, St. Agnes College, and Durdarshan Trivandrum. His mesmerizing way of addressing with humorous touch makes the listeners learn with ease and have a memorable time. With this introduction, I welcome Dr. P. Selvaraj to address the national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022 in agriculture on the topic small scale fisheries and their contribution to rural livelihoods, case studies from developing countries. Over to you, sir. Very good morning to everybody who has joined this webinar. Honorable Vice Chancellor Shekhar Vijayendraji, uh, Professor Emeritus uh, Professor Mohan sir, uh, my earlier senior Mr. M. E. Ashokji, and Manish, who is behind this whole show, uh, friends, students, ladies and gentlemen in India and abroad. It's a very good opportunity for me. First of all, I thank the uh, Sobit University for giving this opportunity as well as Nabad for. Uh, making me to talk in this program. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. I really thank you so much. Uh, friends, uh, Professor Mani has already is a well-known uh, scientist as well as a, a Professor Emeritus. He has made an excellent uh, presentation. It's, he set the tone in the right way. You have a, like you have scanned the entire sector. It, Fisher is an important activity mainly because FAO identified fisheries as an allied activity. Food and Agriculture Organization, Rome, has classified agriculture and allied activity. Fisheries comes under allied activity. It is also very relevant and a major livelihood for maximum number of people. And I thought that because many people are joining here, students are with us, and people may not have fisheries background also. So for their benefit, I have a small presentation. I will just share this thing. Before the uh, presentation comes to you, uh, friends, in fisheries, as is correctly told, there are a lot of people involved in fisheries. Importance of fisheries, I did not tell. Even I uh, am telling you, people even after heart surgery have been advised to go for eating fishes because that uh, homeo, uh, a lot of facilities available, a lot of ingredients available in the fish will help you. One second. Is it opening? Are you able to see a slide? No. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Importance of fishes, I'll tell you a little. Uh, we'll do we'll going for the presentation. Yeah. So. Fisher is an important activity uh, next to agriculture. It contributes to the food security because of the high protein content in that. 
அண்ட் லைவ்லிஹுட் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி ஃபார் நைன் கோர் பீப்புள் அண்ட் சோசியல் அண்ட் கல்ச்சுரல் இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் அட்டாச் டு இட் இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் செக்டார் ஃபார் ஃபுட்டு நியூட்ரிஷன் எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் அஸ் ப்ரொஃபஸர் மணிவா செல்லிங் தட் ஹியூஜ் நம்பர் ஆஃப் பீப்புள் ஆர் எம்ப்ளாய்டு போத் இன் ஃபிஷிங் கல்ச்சர் அண்ட் அலைட் ஆக்டிவிட்டி லைவ்லிஹுட் அண்ட் எக்ஸ்போர்ட் இட் ப்ரொவைட்ஸ் லைவ்லிஹுட் ஃபார் டூ பாயிண்ட் ஃபைவ் குரோர் பாப்புலேஷன் வாட் ப்ரைமர் லெவல் ஹூ ஆர் டைரக்ட்லி இன்வால்வ் இன் த ஃபிஷிங் ஆக்டிவிட்டி அண்ட் டபுள் நம்பர் ஆஃப் பீப்புள் இன் த வேல்யூ செய்ன் as he was explaining value chain is one where whoever is all involved for example a fisherman is a fish farmer is cultivating fish supply seed supply seed feed fertilizer and they are marketers they are trading as well as to ta- coming which is coming to the table to the consumer level this side the other side is people take fish to export processes semi processing and major processing freezing and sending to abroad so these are all the complete value chain entire value chain has to be support from one to the point to point b our production in india 2019 20 for marine fisheries it is 3.72 million metric ton but when you see the potential we have 5.31 million metric ton similarly rather we are using only 70 percentage is available potential which is available fishery potential number 2 is inland fisheries 10.43 million metric ton is the exploitation which you have done so far and the potential is 17 lakh million metric ton 17 million metric ton is the potential where our exploitation only 61 percentage this two figure we are telling mainly because the future remains in inland agriculture export is about 46662 crore we are exporting about 112 countries from our indian coast all fishery products of india is cherished in international market us being the top most market our our buyer from uh, indian export as already professor mani told who is sell, uh, uh, who is uh, the small scale fisheries i think before going to this particular topic i thought because there are lot of participants uh, joining here there are students people involved in fisheries or not involved in fisheries for their better understanding i would like to small fundamentals of fisheries i will have to talk one is many time people talk about inland fisheries fresh water fisheries we come to chatisgarh north, north, north india they call the drinking water fisheries there are lot of terminology is used friends my intention is not to load with lot of material my talk if you could able to help you to get understanding of some five concepts or some 10 inputs i will be more happy first and foremost let us understand the culture side we have a water body like pond or lake or uh, reservoir or the river where we are going to put seedlings and grow fish for 12 months 8 to 12 months is the growth period normally i will go little back uh, when uh, the eggs are hatched just thing will come it is called spawn just born baby imagine just born baby is a spawn then the little grow it is called fry f r y then it becomes fingerling fingerling is nothing but a finger size fish actually fingerling is a word used for understanding finger size fish that is a correct size which can be stocked in a pond if you stock earlier your frog will eat away so for that purpose fingerling is the area is is item which is being stocked in the pond then you feed them with the additional food plankton and other things are naturally available in the pond then you feed them with the supplementary feed earlier time they used to the mahu oil cake and uh, rice bran is mixed and given overnight they soak uh, oil cake in a bucket so it become fully soaked then morning they will mix the rice bran and give as a feed this is a culture practice at the end of the 6th uh, month or 7th month they grow to 200 to 300 or 400 mg uh, gram weight half kg or quarter kg you know so that is a growth that is called farming is called fish farming so fish farming for easy understanding these are all activities one has to understand before entering into small scale fisheries these are all basics because many students are there they should understand the the, the, the terminology used in the fisheries lecture otherwise i'll be going on talking in a high level may not reach the people or participate so this is culture like agriculture we are putting seed and we are growing paddy and one paddy become 100 100 seeds similarly culture is one where from one you are growing to many 
Similarly, fish fingerling is small size, 50 gram or 70 gram, growing to a 750 gram is a culture. This culture can be conducted in a fresh water. They are normally called inland water. Many people talk about inland fisheries, meaning your river water, which, water which can be drunk by us, which can be uh, drink by us now. So this is a water, a, a, a palatable drinking water, fresh water. So many times people use the word freshwater fish culture or inland fish culture. Sometimes in the Ch Chhattisgarh they call it sweet water fish culture and drinking water fish culture. Friends, all are same. Let us understand this concept very clearly. It is growing fishes in the aquatic media where there is no salt. Water. It is a drinking water fish culture, understand. So a river, pond, lake, in Assam it is called Oxpo Lake. <coughs> Sorry, Oxpo Lake is nothing but when a river transfer from one place to other, sometimes it takes a diverted route. Instead of going to the same line, sometimes because of the excess water or something, it takes an extra route. Subsequently, the route is get cut. So you have like an Oxpo, like a, the Arshu you now, that type of pond water is available. They are called ox four legs. Like ox ka full leg ka shape and that type. They are also a potent area. In Assam alone, we have one lakh hectare like that. So potentially, if you see, you'll be astonished. This is one area. One is aquaculture. Now recently, aquaculture is going and happening in the brackish water also. Now what is brackish water? River is going and meeting the sea. River water is a drinking water, sea water is full of salt. If we, if we take one liter of water of sea and boil like Mahatma Gandhi said, uh, did, going on boiling, you have 35 milligram of salt. It's called 35 PPT. <coughs> so that much salt is available in sea water. There is no salt in the fresh water. So when the river meets the sea, that is an area where sea water is mixed it will not be too salty like a sea or too fresh like a fresh water. That is a kyle we are called or the, uh, that is brackish water. That is backwater, brackish water, both are same. Sometimes they call lagoons also. Brackish water, backwater. So I am just clarifying you the terminology so that when I pass the next slides, you will be with me. Otherwise, it will go six feet above your end. So that is one area where there is a lot of potential for growing fish. Why? When a river brings from the hill through the paddy field and area, different areas, it brings a lot of food material. They are all stored in the backwater area only, in the, in the soil. So it is a fertile ground, a nursery ground for young babies to eat. So most of the brackish water is very rich in food item. So there we grow prawn farming or stream farming. We do lot of prawns, lot of shrimps cultivated in that area. Our export, 80% is from shrimp only. Leptopinius venamei is a product, is, is, a, is a only single species, which is being exported. 80% of our export. Imagine. So this area is going to give you huge income and fully owned by the small scale fishery people. So aquaculture and freshwater, I told you. Then aquaculture in the brackish water where river is meeting sea, I told you. Next area is the sea water. We go to Philippines. Other countries like Thailand, Vietnam, when you fly over the, uh, in the sky, you can see like our Indian paddy fields, when you fly over Madurai, you are able to see paddy fields, Parapala, all these frames are there. Same way, in foreign countries we fly over, they have this marking in the sea. They are nothing but cages. Those cages are also being cultured. So sea is a common water area, not only for sightseeing in beaches, but also to income generating area. So Philippines, the entire Philippine coast is full of all boxes kept inside the sea. Now I'll tell you what is cage. Cage is nothing but imagine a four side covered uh, a box, a wooden box covered with all the six sides. Imagine that is a cage with the iron frame. I will show you in the photograph. I will show you with the iron frame. We cover all the six sides with a net and put fishing a feed in a fish, finger fingerlings or small fishes inside the cage 
and keep it in the back water or in the sea when you do it in the sea it's called mary culture marine culture the term mary culture is marine aqua culture aqua means water so culture is possible friends i tell you culture is possible on the fresh water drinking water then in the brackish water semi sal semi saline water as well as in the marine area these are all the future scope areas today technology has been come for growing excellent fishes in the mariculture area in the marine area we are growing sea weeds also sea weeds are very very important sea weeds nothing but plant imagine i am calling i can talk in high level i international and i have talked in international meetings but the purposely i am diluting down is for easy understanding and better understanding for everybody so in the sea water take a thread and insert small small leaves and allow it in allow it in the sea water like a like a hanging uh, rope there the, the plants will grow agar agar like that alwa agar agar these are different types of sea weeds which are exportable huge quantity we require but we are not able to meet the demand ramanathapuram district of tamil nadu basically i belong to the district in that district with they have started a big project in mandapam area sea weed culture the entire village is living on the sea weed culture farm aqua sea weed farming so it is hanging with with a float the rope should be hanging inside the rope you unrope that on inside a small uh, a small plant and allow it to grow and after them you harvest dry in a shade these are all the items which are used in your polish lipstick and even medicines as in the antibiotic capsules comes no it comes from this only there are lot sir, of sir, uh, dr selvaraj can you adjust your camera that you know your, your photo comes to one side you go to the left side slightly left side no okay please adjust your camera no you still you have gone to one side ah. okay, okay fine okay okay, okay. okay. Good. so it's good good ah. so so i was talking about Yeah. Uh, I was, the I slides was, are not moving. Slides. I am not. I am just moving. Before that, I wanted to have a background. I Look. thought uh, if these points are not in the slide, that's why I am keeping it. Uh, we will go with the basic understanding. Then we will have a better uh, uh, reach for the people. So I told you about aquaculture. So fresh water, brackish water, and marine area. There are aquaculture possible. Aqua means water. Culture is not only fish culture. Aqua means we can culture the seaweeds also. That was my driving of the point. So this one potential area I would. second is fishing putting in net and taking fish harvesting the nature that is can also happen in dam waters rivers river line fishing your dam see the entire uh, <coughs> metu dam people living around the tamil nadu metu dam are living only with the catching of fish only government is giving license for them and their entire livelihood they are all covered in the small scale fishery sector they take the boat and small boats and they travel and the canoes they take and the fish and they live on that so fishing is second category first category agriculture aquaculture i told you second category fishing it is possible in the fresh water brackish water as well as marine area marine area you go and big big trawlers are taken 40 feet and 60 feet deep sea also is going people are going for deep sea for fishing with the two crore project in foreign countries like the thailand china and all those people are having a factory ship the yeah, fellow will go for fishing in the ship they will harvest the fish processing the vessel itself the, the ship itself when they come to singapore they land only the cans not they are not landing like fishes in our market so there are highly advanced government of india is going for a deep sea fishing policies then the third area is marine area i told you one is inland water second is uh, aquaculture third is marine fishery marine fish is only i told you about 3.72 million metric ton production is there marine fish is what are the activity we have catamaran katumaram it is only tamil word katumaram the wood is kept together and tied it become catamaran the catamaran unmotorized they don't do motor they simply with the with the with the cloth they have traveled down. then subsequently the outboard motors outboard is because it's outside the boat the outboard motors have come like yamaha suzuki you would have seen in the uh, dams and, and sightseeing places motors you know they start in petrol and run in kerosene all are imported from china 
China, Japan, they are only, you know, we don't produce that. So those outboard motors are fitted with the catamaran and they go for fishing. You can see a common scene in Kerala and all the nine maritime states. Then there are trawlers, bigger boats with a trawl net they go and they harvest. One trawl net today, one trawl net with a boat, engine and net cost you about one crore rupee. We have an excellent boat building yard in Nagapatram and Munambam in Kerala and Ernakulam area. So there are boat builders. There are a lot of boats. In Udupi also we have excellent boat building yard. They construct a boat and those boats are fitted with the engine as well as fresh water tank. Because even though sea is full of water, we cannot drink it. So we have to carry water, we have to carry uh, uh, diesel and we have to carry space for ice also. Because once the fish is cut, you cannot keep it open. The quality will suffer. So these are all activities called fisheries activities. For basic understanding, I wanted to spend time with you. Those already know, you refresh your mind. Second, one more thing I also wanted to explain to you before I proceed. Second thing is, area in marine area, marine area, what is our powers? Many of us does not know. People working in the field also does not know. If you understand that, then you can respect the small scale fishery. From the beach, when you go for a sightseeing or standing in the beach, from the from the wave, which is wave is breaking that area, if you calculate, from there, you measure 12 nautical mile. Air as well as water, we call the distance in the nautical mile. Equal to 1.8 kilometer. So, 1 nautical mile is 1.8 kilometer. So, from the shore, from the shore, if you go up to 12 nautical mile, it is a territorial water. 22 kilometer. For easy understanding. 12 nautical mile is a distance up to which the state government has a power. That is why when the breeding season, governments are declaring no fishing. You are not allowed to go for fishing. State government is able to pass orders because this 12 nautical mile area is under the governance of the state government. It is called territorial waters. After 12, from the starting point only, if you measure 375 kilometer, it is called 200 nautical mile. First 12 kilometer is the territorial water. State government has a power. Then from there, from the shore, 200 nautical mile, 375 kilometer is the uh, economic zone, exclusive economic zone it's called. Nautical miles. So that area is our area where up to 200 nautical mile, 375 kilometer, up to that we have powers. We can prevent anybody fishing there. But we can fish them, we can exploit the waters. You got no. So territorial waters and exclusive examining zone, these are all area where our potential remains. So this fundamental basics we should understand, then only we can proceed further whether we can do. In the marine area, most of the fishermen of the category small scale fisheries, they fish only in the territorial waters. Because they cannot travel. They cannot, they cannot travel long distance because their boat will have adequate petrol or a diesel. They have motor, I told now, outboard motor only they are fitting. So they will not have adequate fuel to come back because there is no petrol bunk inside the sea. The fuel which you are carrying, you have to go fish and come back. So 12 nautical mile, only in that area, only most of the fishermen fishes. That is why over a period of time, their catch is coming down and their income is become unviable, their activity become unviable. Their fishing activity become unviable because catch per unit effort, catch per boat is going on coming over years and the inshore waters are over exploited. Whereas from beyond the territorial waters till the 200 meter, 200 nautical mile, we are not exploiting at all. That is the potential area we are we still available. So that's called, this is the potential, I, I, once again I will bring your attention, from the shore up to 12 nautical mile is the territorial waters and after 12 nautical mile we have the exclusive dynamic zone where we are not called using even though we have sovereign power to exploit. French in a colloquial language tell you, if a Chinese vessel come and fish in our water up to 200 nautical mile, imagine that depth. Maybe 200, 300, 400 feet will be there, meter will be depth. That area is our area. 
so up to 200 nautical miles length and the, up to depth both the soil underground everything is ours we are not only extracting fishes we have no minerals also we are taking from there so living non living uh, oysters who are settling on the shore on the floor. so continental shelf is nothing but the floor soil uh, sea bed actual economic zone is including the water column there are a lot of confusion with many people what is eec what is actual economic zone and what is continental shelf this point i want to clarify from the shore i will repeat for understanding purpose from the shore 12 nautical miles that is 22 km you draw a line put a line vertically the soil bottom and the water everything is governed by the state governments go further up to 375 km or 200 nautical miles that entire water column is called you know, exclusive economic zone the sea bed is called uh, zone and the sea bed is called continental shelf continental shelf is only sea bed for minerals and other things including shelf which will stay on that economic zone is the water column so if we draw a depth inside the going a sea <coughs> 300, uh, 370 km, 200 nautical miles, if you draw a line, I can say it is our Indian waters, nobody should fish here. They can permit it to travel through this, but I cannot put a net and uh, take a fish from here. But unfortunately, our equipments for fishing boat or so is not adequate in the country to exploit beyond retro water sites, I would say. So, we require for a deep sea fishing also, which will help the uh, small scale fishing. How fisheries small scale will help with the deep sea fishing? Deep sea has 20 crore, 30 crore project. But when they bring the fish to the market, my men will travel and sell it. No. So, the allied activity, the allied activity is fine well, provided the sea, deep sea fishing policy is approved by government. Already government has prepared the deep sea fishing policy. It is in the site and they are finalizing. The, for example, I tell you in, in plain language, 200 nautical miles, 370 kilometers, I told no. Those areas we are protecting. It is my water. But we are not permitting others to fish there. And we are also not fishing. See the pathetic condition. I don't have vessel to fish. Whereas when some Japanese vessel comes and fish there, I stop them. Better is living together or a win win situation. I can share my income with the foreign country. He has a boat. <coughs> he has equipment to uh, fishing there, no? So these are all deep sea fishing policies which are all still pending at the government level and uh, appro approval in different level. So if it comes, our production will go up. Otherwise, reaching 1 lakh crore uh, export by uh, 2020 is a big dream. One, why cannot to talk about export by keeping my people starving, you know? I cannot make my family suffering and talk about development outside. So, the, the, the nutrient content of the fish's protein and our fishermen who are living in the shore should have the first right in that. Their livelihood is more important. That is why small scale fishery is defined by FAO like a traditional fisheries. Since year, year long they are doing, involving fishing households, create a small amount of capital, only small catamaran, small boat and energy, small outboard motor, not a big engine. You got it now. Tata ta energy and all, we don't have. That engine is not there. But here only your Suzuki or uh, the, the, uh, all these engines, you know, Yamaha, Suzuki, such engines are fitted with a small catamaran or small canoes. In, in, uh, most of the canoes are less than 40 feet and all. So those canoes are fitted with the outboard motor and relatively small fishing effort. Short trips, maybe they will go for two days, three days. But big uh, vessels are going for two months fishing. There are people going for 20 days fishing. They leave the port as Sarva selling, you know, giving a boarding pass. The gate, gate they leave after filling their kerosene and diesel. They will be fishing for 20 days and come back. They are all big trawlers. My fishermen and small scale fishers go for daily fishing. I have conducted so many studies with them. If I have lived with them actually in Kerala, morning 4 o'clock you have to get up and go and meet them for study. You cannot go by 10 o'clock like, like any studies now. So morning 4 o'clock only they will be landing the catches because they left in yesterday night. They have put the net wait them, sleep over there and bring the green net fishes and bring it back by morning 4 o'clock. So these are all the tough areas where our fishermen are working area. So that is why small scale fisheries 
mainly for local country understand the word mainly for local consumption fish is a highly protein area my my fisherman is eating means very good if you are going to export everything you will be importing only medicines you know so small scale fishing does not allow only for culture culturing or capturing fishing only the small boat or the engine but also for local consumption they are live close to the shore okay then then with this we'll go forward 7.5 percentage of total global production we are making we are very proud to say we are next to china all over the world we are number two friends if you are too much a proud no you will not develop we are next to china agreed what is the difference between me and china 10 times in a running race one fellow finish the race i am still running and telling that i am going second people love it you know so for for taking pride of the achievement we can say we are number two friends one frank truth is because i don't want a very formal talk my experience with 32 years of banking and fisheries with this much qualification i wanted to be very friendly and frank with you tell this is a real situation by looking at a mirror i cannot see somebody else i'll see myself only so india number two all over the world we are proud but how number two china in landing is 10 times more than me so lot of work has been done as professor said there are a lot of societies converted into a multi-service society make them start up make them work equip them to produce more when they produce more they'll eat more their health is improved and the export is also excellent so they contribute 1.2 for uh, for grass value added and agriculture these are all figures which tell you the importance of fisheries but what is written is only one tenth of the potential huge potential since i am talking on fish i am not saying it's huge potential and go it is not ornamental speech not a political speech my mass resource i underlined because of that because coast like 8108 kilometer entire coast we have we have harbors mini fishing landing centers for for climate change we have sanctioned so much infrastructure project for sea walls inside you know for preventing the waves to come and hit the shore we have constructed with a lot of money but those are used for the infrastructure used for the fishermen as for keeping their boat uh, marking their boat and i told you continental shelf you understand now 5.3 lakh square kilometer up the bottom we have shelfies and 20 lakh is our potential for exclusive economy is easy 20 lakh square kilometer that if you close your eyes you imagine from the shore i told you 200 nautical mile 375 kilometer that the entire water is my water that is 20 lakh square kilometer that is the future of india provided you share with the foreign vessels or improve your fishing capacity the territorial and all people should understand because recently in kerala one uh, italian vehicle came and shot somebody you know why kerala police could not take action they are beyond territorial water understanding is very important the fellow the, the italian vessel stood uh, about 25 nautical mile our total nautical mile is over government of kerala cannot action take action and there that is why when the supreme court and settled you understand no? so these are all where which power makes me to rule over and which uh, law permit me it is all international law international law of sea permit you total nautical mile is your you might have seen tamil nadu and sri lanka conflict only because of this our fishermen they cross border and fish and they they catch they catch political things apart the the fishermen health you see so they should be well aware where we should stop where they should not go which is our my area our area is kept un unutilized why we are going and get, get in the enter 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 yourself so why don't you uh, diversify go for a culture ramanandapur fisherman i am telling you the proud i am telling you instead of getting caught in sri lanka can't they do aquaculture with the marine culture can't they do uh, the, the seaweed fish culture seaweed culture somebody has to teach them talking in the ivory tower will not help us that is why professor money i was telling we our findings our recommendation should not be a routine recommendation of the seminars which i had i attended thousands of seminars sir the residual comes from the seed quality should improve the water should be developed no 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 let us be point one two three four implementable action plan let us before that so the implement action point is 
diversify them call all the ramnad fishermen tell them your scope remains in diversify don't take away from the shore they will not come to tiruchirappalli or madras and see livelihood opportunity allow them to stay in the shore only they are more comfortable their habitat only diversify them i am going to talk about little later okay so the process already covered about the inland resources like rivers canals i am not repeating that we have anti sources resources not a problem at all vast network of resources we have vast network of research bodies we have vast network of development departments we have a proactive government we have lot of schemes we have only thing is linking them coming to a common platform number of villages 3200 marine villages are there everybody is doing marine fishing only 80 you understand 861 percentage are below poverty line one line is sufficient to tell what is the poor condition immediately people say that fishermen drink and spend money no friend all over the world fishermen are drinking only philippine fishermen also drink even i will drink when i am going for fishing because the profession is a body pain will help the profession is tough profession <clears throat> by doing a bank job i don't drink is not a blessing boss when i do that work which is painful body they drink that is all over the world all over the world fishermen are drinkers only but that is not the answer to tell them you be in poverty we have not taught them how to save money or we have not removed them from the clutches of money lender local money lender friends fisheries sector if you go if you see when you go to a beach you can find there are people coming with the bag of money they give to the fisherman the fisherman does not go to the bank i am taking lot of effort to go for a lot of kcc i'll talk it later so i am we are, we are from ramad sir we are taking lot of effort to give kcc to fisherman so that at least money lenders ka problem will be solved money lender will not give easy cost i am telling you when you, when you undergo the pain only you know talking is easier advising for stomach pain is easiest thing but when you have stomach pain only you know what is pain so fishermen take money from the money lender standing by the beach with the commitment that whatever i am catching in the sea i'll come back and give to you at a cost cheapest cost they are often over expect that has to go first government of india new ministry was formed in 2019 these are all general thing which i am not going to spend time on that nfdb subsidy schemes are there but are not linked to the bank loan bank loan is not compulsory for availing subsidy when bank loan is compulsory you can in, ensure end use blue revolution neel karanti mission was start startup by government <coughs> now they are called the prime minister malsha sambhala yojana and fidf fisheries infrastructure development fund is part of the uh, professor mani has already explained to you about fmmo you can charge everything i am not repeating that so the sector is very very important sector our focus for livelihood opportunity for small scale should be collectivization as honorable prime minister often says collectivization will give a bargaining power collectivization will give respect to the farmers collectivization will result in price uh, discovery collectivization will bring you together your cost of input will come down so cost of production will come that itself is a profit so need not wait for production sell it out and gain money saving input itself is a reduction of the cost of cultivation itself is a profit so this is only area where you have a group mode self help group joint liability for, for time purpose only i am quickly saying self help group is some 20 people coming together in informal way form a group and go for bank lending and go for self saving if five people are joining in together and start an activity they are called joint liability group for liability group activity is a must and five people are sufficient and bank also support them that will be grow further extrapolate them you will have fp farm producer organization nothing but a collectivization of producers farmers producer organization fpo that is the talk of the town government of india is planning for a big way 10000 fpos they are not fisheries fisheries separate it comes under pmmsy they are of 500 fpo target and the pmmy in agriculture the target is 10000 there should not be any confusion on that then farmers club the banks uh, the farmers can come to their farm club so in tamil nadu they are called interest group farmers interest group fig farmers interest group is a group of farmers coming together please replace the word fish farmer then they mix together some 10 farmers interest group come together they become fpo 
then uh, next is grant nabard is giving lot of grant support professor is talking about working together we are willing that there are the formality you go uh, you uh, we have a department called dear uh, dr satish sai you know he has already spoken in this forum and uh, he is in charge of that and already we are giving lot of grant support for studies and working together money is not a limit i will repeat even though i know what i am talking the quantum of money is not important what you deliver is more important deliverables are important objectives are important to set an example in group me it may look exaggeration but i tell an example for nabard chair we given one crore for conducting a study we given 5 lakhs in kerala so the range is not the point of many time when i talk in seminars they say what is the limit sir how can i apply how much i apply don't ask that question ask me what you are going to do what is deliverable <coughs> what is the need of the hour relevance to the sector if we prepare a project report that can be submitted we are submitting last week we have sanction you get to be announced there even then i am telling you to understand the feature cma for it we have already sanctioned the one crore for nabard chair that is already closed now already completed now we have given so many grant for conducting national seminar mbd is conducting in indaqua we have supported them when i was in kerala i have sanctioned so many grant for people for fish farming in palakkad i have sanctioned for the aqua and the, the bio flower cultivation both for demo farming and training all we have sanctioned so so money is not a problem grant is not a issue only thing is deliverable eligible by people have to apply through proper channel so that is uh, that's what i'm telling you i'm not committing anything but that is the friends available one more grant since i am talking about the grant i'll tell you that's called fspf farm sector promotion fund friends from the hard earned money from the profit of nabard we are allocating some money for r and d for farmers development for solving the problems of the farmers there are many grant assistance available we go to nearby regional office of nabard the state headquarters you will know empty number of schemes available only thing is many fishers people do not come and it is all taken by agriculture so i wish people from that i i told many of our fishers college university whenever i go for a talk i tell them please use the opportunity please avail in the country we have very few people telling that there is money with me come and take who will tell i go and tell everywhere and tell them that please avail this is for the not for you and me it is for the person who is standing in the field a unknown farmer is living in the villages for their betterment only we are doing this so this is one example farm sector promotion fund fspf where we can give lot of thing i was in charge in, in kerala where i have sanctioned uh, Uh, Phyla Groupi for an NGO in Kerala in Palakkad for developing training people on bioflock cultivation. Bioflock is a new system wherein fish culture is being promoted. Sarva selling Ariana is number one because of bioflock. Because of bioflock movement, water recycling system Ariana has water problem is there. Even then they are good in fish and oil water recycling system. So these are all things available readily available in the market in the in the field. So only thing we should use it actually. <coughs> nabard is doing lot of support very briefly i'll cover this one is we have a ddm office all over the state everywhere in the country we have all the uh, districts are covered by nabard office you can nearby nabard office you can meet as a district development manager we prepare every year annual plan that's called a potential linked plan what is potential of fisheries fishery is one of the chapter what is potential for fisheries what is the level of bank finance what is left out for future my point of telling this is not to boost that nabard is doing this my intention is if you want to develop a sector in a village go and meet the ddm take the plp copy it has a bible it is a bible it contains all data for example you are conducting study in 24 baragana district of west bengal please collect the plp it contains the data that is a source for your studies will become more relevant you need not reinvent the wheel again that is readily available so plp is one where the district potential including fisheries agriculture animal husbandry we prepare then every plp is is called it is uh, it is made into a small state focus paper we collaborate all the data and that data is called a state focus paper every january we have a state creed seminar where in many state the honorable chief minister will come and preside over fisheries minister fisheries secretary the all government secretaries attend the meeting where we say this is the potential which you are not done they indicate what is infrastructure gap 
what is potential fisheries in the state in the, in the particular state what are the bottlenecks what why it is not happening so these type of efforts we are taking on the create planning side second is wait uh, visit the nabard website www.nabard.org n a b r d dot organize o r g we have bankable model project many time i have seen small farmers are exploited by the chartered account i don't have anything against chartered accountants they prepare project report karke they take lot of money from them which is not required friends come to the site download free of cost modify it become project report for project report don't spend huge money i have i have prepared four models there there are lot of models prepared by us and kept as a free of cost visit the our nabard website and download free of cost prepare your own project report only thing is what we prepared is in a general data in ramanandapuram district if you want to prepare go to the nearby ask what is the cost of the machine and update it the project report is ready so evaluate the practical data your project report is ready this way i can help you second is fishery planning 2021 we have planned for 19000 crores people all will started by and it includes small and big farms then infrastructure sir was telling about the creation of infrastructure is very very important friends infrastructure creation will always help the small farmer till yesterday there was no landing center fishermen bring the fish spoiled one to the villages to the houses because they are exposed to the sun for long time when proper landing centers are there you can take ice you can take fresh water you can take you can take kerosene at a subsidized rate from the landing center and properly the auction agent will come to the landing center your marketing is not a problem there are ladies coming with i can later i can show you a photograph ladies coming with the aluminum vessel purchase the fish go on the land uh, this call trading they go on to the, do uh, marketing of the fishes and they carry a small wooden piece and knife also to clean and give you got it now so these are all avenues possible for that purpose nabard we have called rural development fund rural infrastructure development fund called radf very commonly known and in that we have 1207 project sanction for 3100 crore sanction means 85 percentage of the total finance outlay imagine it is 3200 crore is the 80% what will be 80% what will be 100% so about 3500 i 4000 crore investment has already been sanctioned of which current year if you see 59 big projects big big fishing harbors have been sanctioned and we worth of 810 crore well, this year alone i am telling this data is up to december so this is going in a big way last three years itself we have given 1400 crore we have sanctioned my intention is not to tell that we have pumped this much money there are loan to state governments my intention is this much infrastructure is done only keeping small farmer small scale fisheries in mind so that his protection is uh, time of transport is delayed uh, reduced and the quality is improved he get a better price for fishes under pmm prime minister malsi sambada yojana we have fisheries and aquaculture infrastructure development fund under which already 20 project have been sanctioned eight the eight hundred crores has been sanctioned mostly it has been taken by tamil nadu 15 projects out of the 20 is from tamil nadu remaining are from west bengal goa uh, like that only okay so this is another area mainly people have to come forward promote so one call for the state government will be these are all very cheap funds available from nabard side at rate of 6% or so we procure uh, we mobilize the funds from the market and give them and this can be applied for infrastructure purpose by the state governments 10 state governments already signed moa with this memorandum of agreement we already signed and after which four states are already being using this so this infrastructure will also help the promotion friends coming to the main structure of the small scale fisheries as sarvath ali telling it was unorganized they are not getting importance because they are unorganized coming together is power working together only will help you to get a better realization and already covered catch for unit is going on coming down making their investment unviable and banks are not giving money because of past performance npa to put an example state bank of india muttam branch in nagar kanyakumari area they sanctioned 100 catamaran maximum it become np then which bank will get motivated bank of baroda give lot of aquaculture farming most of them become np i am not supporting bank i am telling you the real story i will repeat when i stand in front of mirror i can see only my face this sector is having this type of difficulties past performance was very poor 
So we have to quickly come out of that. The easy way is farm them to SAG, farm them to JLG, because in SAG, JLG, banks of finance, I'll show you a success story. Case study is going to come in another five minutes. So that you can see when people come together, their recovery is excellent. Banks are more happy. One small village in Udupi, 120 crores they are given for aquaculture, for fishermen. Can you believe? In the case study, I'll explain you what has happened. So my suggestion will be morally of awareness creation. Sar is already doing that in an in, in educated crowd like MBA students. Let us, we have to go further for the farming area. Maybe joining hands with the NGO, the university have to do it. Nabadke is very ready to support that. A capacity building on area where we can work together. The Nabad consultant services are there. So many banks have, have come to me and told, Sir, I am not a fishers graduate like you. I don't understand. What is, I told a lot of confusion in the beginning. I told, no, what is inland? What is aquaculture? I don't know. I don't understand. Karke. So for their purpose, for any project report, if you want to evaluate, we can approach NAPCON. We will do it very, very happy. For techno-economic appraisal, we do. We will prepare a DPR also. Lot of professionals are, we engage professors. We engage leading uh, experts. Recently, Dr. Sukumar from Fisher's College, Kutukudi, was involved in excellent done work he has done. As a professional, he has very evaluated the project. Yes, it can be given or it cannot be given. Only two doubt in the mind of banker. Whom to give, how much to give? Whether the fellow is eligible fellow, whom to give? First question. How much to give? Second question. If both are answered, Dr. Sukumar has done excellent work. We have, we have paid them as a professional piece, that is second story. But even, we should have people like this, no? So we require, we, I call upon all the scientists who are attached to this program. Please do some service to the society. Not free of cost. We will pay. We will pay. Join hands with the NAPCONs. We will, we will do projects with them. We will do studies with the Join hands with the NABAD. Conduct studies for how to bring out the sector for a better uh, shape. Then focus on clusters. Please. Don't engage that's no no sir. Fishermen should not be should be financed. I have a thousand farmers should be financed. No friends. The things have changed. We are living in a new normal. Old things are not, not talked about. We are not politicians to talk like that. We have to farm them into clusters. Friends, in this opportunity, I tell you, I visited Mandaman. Sar was telling about Andaman, that's why I'm telling this. I visited Andaman, stayed for a week's time and prepared a cluster project approach. I prepared a cluster model where because I will I, I, not down to time or else I would explain to you because of the tsunami before tsunami the land went inside you know that uh, earthquake came then only tsunami came very very quickly I will say, say that I will share with you excellent experience when the tsunami came later before tsunami earthquake came when earthquake came there are a lot of inland inside the land island Andaman island the boomy went inside. There are coconut trees went inside. It became big or very a big cavity on which coconut trees are still growing. It's still there. Next tsunami came. It filled the water. When the tsunami filled the water of the cavity, where coconut trees are there, entire all salt water, sea water, entire coconut has burnt, become uh, useless now. All become actually. burnt. Nothing, no coconut will get. Now the roots are there. So I, I, I was given opportunity to visit them along with one scientist from CMFRI. I went and told them because the doubt was, see, I tell you very, 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 I'm not exaggerating. One basic doubt of the government was whether to approve the coconut trees. They are not useful. Whether to approve them or not. I told them, don't approve. The minute you approve it, the water becomes acidic. Nothing, nothing can be grown there. Keep it there. Go for shrimp farming. Go for shrimp farming. The indicated fish culture. Go. So fish come prawn. Culture was promoted. Island is very, very fertile and uncontaminated. Where India was suffering with the viral disease, Andaman was not suffering because it's a virgin land. So I developed a project which was submitted to the government of India by the administrators. We paid, the, the Andaman government paid us 10 lakh rupees for the, 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 the assignment. That is a different story. We I did for napkins. So there are areas where we have to work down the base level, preparing project report, preparing concept notes, preparing handholding them for capacity building, joining the two stakeholders. They may not know. 
See, if somebody has fallen down, if you give a hand, do you think that he will immediately catch? He will doubt whether you pulled on. First, he has to catch your hand, then only can he protect the fellow. No. So, joining hands are very, very important. That is why it was a department NGO should join hands with the bankers. Bankers are ready to give. Banks are having a lot of money, but they are in search of a good proposal. Good proposals are roaming around there. Bad proposals are coming closer to the bank. Imagine. These are all life. They are all real. I am I'm scanning the environment, I am telling you. This is happening. So, that the solution is value chain management. Now. I told you in the beginning, the exporter to the table. I should be, for example, here yeah, we have a lot of uh, people doing wonderful work. So, somebody, so many people are there. They do this linking work. They, eh? Samun Nadi, they are doing for agriculture. For uh, animals, milk, they are doing Samun Nadi in uh, many hundred value chains they have developed. Somebody should develop fisheries value chain. If any model is there, go and visit them. No. They are open. They are very good people. <coughs> Nobody has supported them. They are very good people. It is not like tea shop. Eh? If somebody wants to open a tea shop, no, no, I will not show you what I am doing. No. Here, it's been coming to the development. So, my only request will be like you go to the website and see someone what they do. They link the farmer, fish farmer, they link the dairy farmer, they link the uh, dairies also. So, for, for union, milk collection, payment, then arranging loan for them, purchase of cows, cow shed, milking machine, and this side. Then, other side is for the uh, for desi ghee preparation by products of milk chilling of milk milk freezers all those milk powder making every part of the value chain is finance so the need of the hour i understand and i agree and 100 percent will support that is the value chain financing models nabad is ready to join hands with them in fact my department is doing a lot of work in that value chain financing will do and we will join to do it one man cannot do it. One can. Nabat is not the only solution for all problems in the country. Now, another suggestion will be, as Sarva very clearly saying, we have 20,000, 21,741 primary fishermen cooperative society. They are nothing but small FPOs only. They all join together for the purpose of development. In the face of development, many support does not come. Sir, I constructed a house in a village without electricity connection, without water connection. Can I live there? become not uh, habitable. Similarly, 21,000 primary fishermen cooperative society with 35 lakh members, 35 lakh 53,115 members. So they are available. They are your stock. Because of the various reasons, willful or not willful or environmental, internal, external reasons, they become loss making. They are not recognized now. So, reviving them is the only solution. They need to be revived. They need to be converted into multi-service centers. Same society giving another thousand rupees. Once again, society will once again go back. Renaming. When, uh, uh, when rim, rim soap was not going well, they came as ultra rim. Or new rim. They gave up a product like that. So, these farmers, 35, 35 lakh people can be made into FPOs. All may not come. Overall producers, motivate them. Take a class on them. What is FPO? What is the advantage? Show the FPO model. Take to Pune. Some FPOs are there. Take to Kerala. There are excellent fisheries FPOs are there. For Aramundal fisheries in Kotem, excellent FPO is there. They are, they are earning a huge money. 95, some 100 farmers came together. In, in Chennai, we have Kulatur. Kulotur, entire uh, villages are, every household we have ornamental fishes that is being exported through Calcutta to Singapore. Our export market is excellent for ornamental fisheries. I used to, yesterday I was telling, fisheries lecture can be listened by vegetarians also because we talk about keep the fish and enjoy them, not eating them. So, so what I am saying is there are a lot of potential for ornamental fisheries. Farm into group, cluster is the only reason, only solution. Sarah was already referring to the uh, DFI report. I am not reading it already. Uh, that is the reference. They already told that there is a need for cooperative movement in this agriculture and allied sector, especially fisheries area. It is a, it is a complete required. Next point is diversification. I was telling you, the youth is not interested, sir. In agriculture also, many farm, many youth, sons of agriculture is not son, agriculture now. 
our younger generation don't want to soil their legs actually they don't want to dirty their legs to come into the field but at the same time if you allow them to go for startup they'll excel at do they do excellent work all over agro processing they are excellent work i have seen many farmers many farmer children doing hiring of farm making farm machinery they have done excellent work but they are doing agriculture only so bringing back youth to agriculture the only way is diverse way activity <coughs> if you ask them to go into the sea for fishing they may not go but if i make them into fresh to go they will do dressing and change because the margin is huge and a decent job not compelling they will not can you not get up at 4 o'clock 9 o'clock market is sufficient or laptop is sufficient so the future remains in the value addition quality deliver and when the covid was affected when the covid lockdowns were there we never went for marketing for jewelry we never purchased to purchase cloths for our purpose we all took food in the house only the only sector which was serving us throughout the covid was the aquaculture agriculture and these farmers only so farming is a very resilient activity vibrant activity where the resilience is are more so they can be supported in any way by diversification what are the areas the diversification main requirement is awareness creation unless there is you go and teach them they will not do if are landless people for example if i don't have land the fisherman the small scale fisherman who does not have land they can do for edibleized farming in backwater or marine seaweed culture i was telling i i purposely told about seaweed because this is a cross reference seaweed farming and contract farming pepsi coca cola they started a unit in ramnathapuram jointly with the local for for seaweed farming see there are another very also i want to say in this context we want to have alibaba model alibaba model in china is mobilizing resources and exporting them a farmer the individual msme unit does not have in permission for export he does not have export license then lc does not have because his worth is not there so accumulate them collect them group them collect them then export them because alibaba has export mart alibaba has export capacity so what we require is alibaba model in, in in fishery sector somebody can go because i don't have time to go in detail somebody can go to google and tell what is alibaba model in china nothing but mobilizing resources from the poor taking the license for the alibaba and exporting them and passing on the benefit passing on the benefit to the farmers so pen culture these are already are covered cycle with the ice box and we were like i'm having land there are small farmers small scale fishermen having land also they can go for feed mill they can go for hatchery production seed production see the the uh, leptospirosis uh, tsunami sorry uh, venami that particular prawn i told you no know, yellow venami is the prawn all seeds are imported we go to madras airport we have a accommodation center there they bring from america and acclimate them to tamil nadu climate then take to the farm so why don't we go for hatchery production <coughs> seed production we have short supply of seed many places seed production packaging dressing all semi processing these are all here a market our fish market is like a fish market only people talk about fish market no in a negative way because our fish markets are like that when you harbor if you are selling about 30% wastage go to any fishing harbor you are walking on the fish only most of them are wasted 30% was wasted fao director general visited and he told that the waste which you do for agriculture i can feed europe that much waste how to convert them why it is waste tell me why it is waste because the quality has come down it cannot be marketable it is no more edible who made it you are not supplied ice you are not preserved them in fact one line i tell you the fish which is coming out of water should not see the temperature of our india it directly go to the ice it is called the cold chain harvest the fish put it to the ice all south african countries are doing so all south asian countries are doing that only no every boat every fisherman is having ice he take the fish and put it in the ice whereas my fisherman bring the ice open in the deck deck means the top of the boat you see any fishing landing center 
in the boat they are keeping it they are being proud i am bringing the catch unfortunately most of the mar spoil the spoilage starts when the fish comes out of water that is why waste it comes in. so you have to attack where it uh, where is the source then only you can be able to answer all the problems like vending machines online trading now the, the many people does not cook in the house now online trading is very popular one of my classmate sun is living on that entire livelihood and he is a, he is a crore pati today you know what is doing he is arranging purchasing fish clean them like uh, like uh, fresh to home type there are water agencies do in kerala many are doing in cmfra we have a model if anybody want to see the model they can visit cmfra site how they are doing fish farm market fish market online fish market central marine fish resistance so cmfra kochi is doing then other thing is focus already covered this point group lending is only way area based approach is for example then promote value chain already this point already covered value chain will address subsector that is more important there are areas like semi processing value addition cleaning sir you will not believe me one one project i sanctioned in tamil nadu for dressing the prawn but there was a huge market for the the shells of the prawn whereas in in ramnagar we so go on the road it will stink because they clean the fish and throw it out but one fellow came and told me sir i want to purchase all the cleaned shells you got it no sir prawn removal of the waste flesh is exported the cover shell is there that is wasted but many time people came and asked i want that shell sir i asked what you do i will export what are you doing they are extracting chitin chitosin these two item they are extracting from the waste of the prawn shells so from wealth from waste we have written paper but they are all possible in fisheries all possible in fisheries so you have fish waste you go to the animal husbandry to feed me how many of us know this is all revolution silently happening they are not exposing because you will enter into their market so many time they do this integration multi product is multi insurance integrated in another area fish startup is one area where sarva is telling that i fully support that ecosystem eco tourism and uh, restoration mangrove forest we have sanctioned 25 crore in visakhapatnam for ms swamina foundation for restoration of mangroves you can go to the website and see it is a climate resilient project climate adaptation fund project nefcc project 25 crore we have sanctioned and uh, uh, forget about the money the swamina foundation has started how to rebuild the ecosystem by uh, system restoration we have sanctioned same in tamil nadu also two islands in thootukudi area we have sanctioned the project these are all telling why i am saying this has to popularize among the fishermen fishermen should know by growing a mangrove my catch will improve it's called fish aggregating device fad fish aggregating device is a waste when there is a shed all fish will come and stay in foreign countries what they do they dump the used car inside the sea they dump the used cars they go and drunk inside the sea that car become a fish aggregating device many fish will come and breed inside they will have ingons so fishermen will have best catch near the cars we are not doing anything actually we are not doing anything we are very proud that whatever has done is only one ton i am not exaggerating you know i am not uh, uh, blaming anybody we together have to blame because we have not respected the fisheries in the correct way what it demand last point is the credit guarantee fund every sector the whole world this point i tell you the whole world india is the only country which gives credit guarantee for animal husbandry sector we are given we are operating that for farmers produce organization we are going to give credit guarantee is nothing nothing but if a bank is giving money to the farmer for fisheries activity if he, in any natural calamity is not able to pay i stand guarantee collateral fisherman is not able to give collateral banks are worried about the recovery and collateral the solution is guarantee our honorable prime minister repeatedly says and he is the only man who announced all over the world india is the only country where credit guarantee is being done why don't we try for fisheries we should try for fisheries get it animals but already got it then capacity building already covered so i am not repeating that the action point will be huge untapped potential is available here lot of research agencies lot of development agency proactive government 
This is the right time we should work together. Shareholders like the department, uh, Soviet University and other universities, NGOs come join together. Let us have a meaningful discussion and let it be action, implementable action we should go for it. And NABAD is always there to support. We have done for the entire tribal community. We have done for the entire watershed development. We have done for crores of money for development for ecosystem builders. So we can also, fisheries is also a yeah, very pet subject for us. <coughs> we are there to support and use it. So I will just took two minutes, I will finish it up by saying my experience with this. I already covered this point. We have a product called, uh, for feder federation, uh, you corporate if it may, I wanted to say that. We have a federation clearly a separate line of creative we have. So that can also be used. Recognize, see, future depends on only knowledge, knowledge skill. Skill based agriculture, knowledge based farming. This is the future key. We cannot talk about old, the old extent engineering and all. So technology is the future. Collectivization is the answer. Group mode of financing is the method which you can adopt. So with that, two experience I'll share you. These are case studies. In, uh, I was working as a general manager in Trivandrum. One day I thought uh, in the, in the, there was a flood in Kerala. There are a lot of cages in the, in the flood I saw. People say that it is from zoo. Their animal cages are going. It is not so. People are doing the cage culture. This is a cage. This is the cage. All the sides are covered. And that is deep in the water. And the fishes are thrown. Under the float, there is a water. See, you can see the third photograph. You can see the flush of the water inside. Fish is growing inside. They feed them and grow them and harvest them. It's a protected box in the water. If the bottom is not covered, it's called a pen, P -E -N. It is plugged in the shore. That is like, like, like in villages, you know, the, the, the goats are being tied to the tree and they grow, no? Same way. In the box, fish seeds are put and they are growing. <coughs> I prepared a project report. This project report is easy. Anybody can download. It is available from SLBC website of Kerala. I have a PPT and uh, the, the entire project report I prepared. It is available free. Anybody can download. This is successful model. I never thought. I made a 10 minute presentation in the state level managed committee. And the reserve bank I told it's an excellent product. The RBI uh, regional director told even I will resign and join here. This much income is there. I'm just quoting that much potential we have. And that has really seen the light of the day. The regional director of RBI Trivandrum told his GM to follow it up. He followed with all lead banks. Finally, 3.25 crore in you know, two years. With 100% repayment. The, the, every word has a meaning. Since the road of time, I'm not explaining in detail. Every hand has a loaded with experience. So conceived by Nabad by me, same for a supported, NFDB supported with the subsidy, banks including cooperative societies, DC cooperative bank, they are supported with, with 3.25 crore. These are all fishes cultured them. You can see the cage on the right side. Then this slide is this fisherman. One corporation bank, now it's called Vanga Union Bank of India, earlier corporation bank in Udupi, in Udupi area, Udupi district may. This is a fishing harbor Udupi. These ladies, what they do, they take money from money lender, purchase fish. There is a wooden basket there, the lady sitting there in the center photograph. There's wooden floors. They clean the fish and go to the villages, individual houses and sell them. Trading activity. For which banks are not given money. Trading they are not given. They invariably go to a money lender. Money lender will give money and 20,000 rupees or 10,000 rupees will give. With 10,000 rupees will purchase and they earn 200 rupees extra, keep 100 and the interest and they pay. This is a normal thing. One corporation bank manager told, why don't you do joint SHR jails? The corporation bank manager in Udupi, he told that, he called the picture woman and told her, why don't you do SHG? SHG means 20 ladies. The lady was seeing them, she told, no, no, sir, 20 ladies will not work together. <laughs> then only five ladies joined, joined liability group they formed. You can see that the bank was supported. That this is the bank with the, their, their JLG members. Five, five ladies came together and formed a JLG and bank started giving. Any guess how much money would have given by the bank? One group formed, they become advertisement. They went to other feature my ladies. They told, come, come, your manager is giving money. 50,000 rupees the bank gave. 50,000 rupees without collateral. With the aluminium chatty and one wooden box, what is the collateral available? 50,000 rupees they believed five people and five five JLG gave. That bank today, as next slide will tell you, this is the result. 
100 percent recovery, 157.55 crore for 3,780 jailed. Now it is called Union Bank of India. The place is called Malpe in Udupi. Nabad appreciated them and sent them abroad. The manager was given a foreign visit also to encourage. Then immediately government of India thought that this is all which are I have a scheme, but I have nobody is taking. So government of India, Karnataka told that 50% rate of interest 3% I will give. So subvention they gave. So they got immediate. That's why in development <laughs> plan, all farmers will join you. This is only my in more, this is the this is the last point. Like any other countries, foreign countries, <coughs> like North uh, Taiwan, the Philippines, all this uh, in uh, Vietnam, China, these are all countries where they help the small <laughs> farmer, they motivate the small farmer, they ensure development at the small farmer level, so that they also develop and they develop the economy. And we should also follow the model. I just kept it for understanding purpose because somebody has raised the question how much money has been given by the bank. So, this is this FITF of four states. I told no 800 pros were sanctioned. All Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, AP, all these 10 states have already signed the MOU. Only four states they have taken Tamil Nadu has taken <coughs> and West Bengal, Goa, Gujarat they have taken. So, four states only. Only one second. And Kisan Credit Card Kelly Nabad has promoted, and uh, they are also under submission government for the media. That is the last part I would say. I think it's over. Yes, sir. Okay. So you can come out. Yes, sir. So thank, thank you, you very much. Very much. <laughs> and uh, you know it's very. <laughs> it's a so. <laughs> it is a very important uh, address which you made it, and uh, this is uh, your one-hour talk, more than one-hour talk, which has brought out a complete broad spectrum of what is available, what can be done, how we should go about it. You have addressed five Ws and one H. Why? Where? when for whom by whom and why and how no this is a very important talk and i have been longing for quite some time to have such a you know well thought about talk and uh, you are dr silveraj i should salute you for your very you. emotional and also pragmatic address to the audience that Fisheries is a sector that we are, its potentials are available. We are not exploiting it. And, uh, you know, and uh, how long this can happen. And you rightly also said it that the Director General of FAO, the waste from India, he can feed it to the European countries, you know, if it is processed. And, you know, this is. You know, I have been I have been watching. I have been under various my you know programs. When I was in service, I must have visited more than 450 districts under the district level programs. Then I thought that rural, if India is in rural, you know, agrarian economy, you know, person like me who was born and brought up from the in rural India, have to bring the technology back to rural India, and that's how. From the 28 sectoral database development program, which would if it have been operationalized as it has been put it in 1987, today the country with artificial intelligence and big data analytic tools are available with the GS technology, India would have been different. But the thing is that as in India is concerned, that everybody wants to work in silos. And whether it is a district administration, a state administration, or central administration. And you know this 28 sectoral database, one village level information system, and you know 29, which was presented to the then district collectors, which were held in 1987, 88, 89, 
I was there to present the case studies and as to how to go about it, which went through. And that time we didn't have the technology, but we were very strong in information system. And uh, India would have been a model. Then various state governments come out with IT department and every central government department came out with IT department. They got their, doing their own activities, not focusing on one village level information system, which everybody has to exploit it, which has not happened. Whether it is a central government, state government, whoever wants to do for a particular village, everybody has to exploit the same database, not multiple databases. And even with this, even for an electoral database, Chief Election Commission has a different database and State Election Commission has a different database, not even one database. So with the Digital India program that, you know, that we have to undertake digitalization of agriculture sector and fisheries is a very important thing that I have been, you know, you know, voicing for quite some time. That's why I purposefully put the word that when, when the whole country is talking about startup, 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 and people can get onto that perishable, non-perishable in agriculture sector, but fisheries is a different aspect. And when you have a 21, 22,000, you know, primary, primary fisher cooperative societies, and why don't you convert them, as you rightly said it in your suggestion, that convert them as a multi-service center. When there's a value chain, you have 33 lakhs members, and it can give twice the number for in the value chain, it can give about one lakh crore as a potential. And it is important thing that that's the reason only. And, you know, I even have that, you know, the capacity building and the 22,000 co cooperative society, which I have been voicing, even the CoopNet and e-cooperatives when in 2004, when I as a deputy director general was looking into the complete agriculture sector, you know, you know, digitalization. The National Cooperative Union of India was having the centenary celebration. So they wanted to have an article from me. So I, with my group people, I thought that let it be a group activity. It's a cooperation rather than individual uh, one, author one. So put it and there I recommended networking of all cooperative societies with the name CoopNet and e-cooperatives. And the report is available. I can send it to you, but still it is valid. And they have come out. Their publication came in 2007. And when this doubling farmers income was, um, you know, you know, uh, constituted, and I'm very happy that volume 11 has also had this recommendation. And this is very important. See, collective grouping, co collecting the farmers, working through them, and getting into these, you know, these uh, making e-governance, blockchain-based traceability in, you know, cooperative sector will make you know, the cooperative sector management completely, you know, free from political corruption. And you have any cooperative society, you have eight lakh cooperative society, you have out of which you have about something like two lakh dairy cooperative societies, and also one lakh primary uh, agriculture credit societies, PACs, and about 22,000, you know, fisherman cooperative societies. And they, if they have a value chain, each cooperative society, you can have side by side a startup to help them. You convert them as a startup, attach with various associated shareholders, capacity building, and you know to see to that no fish which comes out of water goes out as a raw material. It has to go as a process to one. When tsunami took place, the TVS people were interacting with me. They said, that, "Sir, what can be done?" I told him that don't give any you know money donation and so on and so forth for the Tamil Nadu coastal village, he give them processing center. TVS is a big industry. We purchased a lot of printers for the agriculture marketing information system network. So we told them that, you know, don't give anything except fish, you know, fish processing center. You know, tsunami took place till now, no processing centers has been established. Even from Kanyakumar district, all the fish goes. That is not even a cold storage. You have a port which has come over there, but other ports are not being allowed to come. And th there is no cold storage. You know, the Tamil Nadu has got so much coastal line. And, you know, the fishermen and thousand, thousand, you know, fishermen are li living in, you know, below poverty line. 
so this is in one area where you know we have to you know you know in a you know in a concerted efforts we have to go with an action plan and that's why you know that you know the, the Soviet university engineering you know engineering and technology institute deemed to be an university Soviet institute and we have signed an MOU with the fish corporate to you know revive the 22,000 primary fishery cooperative societies in a digital one, digitalized and value chain. And with that, I would like to request NABAR, how NABAR and, uh, you know, Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology, these two centers of excellence, and Fish Corporate can join together and also National Fisherman, you know, Fisheries Development Board to see to that 22,000 fisheries cooperative societies, maybe in another two years from now, he can do they this. are globalized. They are all, you know, like MSMEs, they should be globalized and fisheries value chain is in one, inland fisheries value chain and blockchain traceability based uh, traceability for the fisheries one, so, you know, from Arabian Sea, Lashadiv administration and Andaman administration, like what, you know, Dr. Baskaran said it and, uh, you know, with this, uh, you know, blockchain based traceability for Tuna and blockchain based traceability for Hilsa from Bay of Bengal. These are all some of the things we should consciously we should do that. And uh, people like you, people like, uh, you know, you know, the uh, NABARD and institutes and Soviet University and Fish Coped and National Fisheries Development Board and, you know, can do wonders in the country. And uh, I was, in, you know, the real craft the database on fishing vessels. And also the, you know, it's yes, a very important, you know, database which has been developed. And, um, you know, we were, you know, the then Depart Secretary, you know, Animal Husbandry Fisheries, you know, and uh, as a Deputy Director General National Informatics Center and NIC Truandra, Mrs. Kasturi, you know, the, as a project leader for this railcraft project has done wonderful thing. But this has to be, you know, made it as a, as a you know, not only for, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, marine fishing vessels, but also, you know, that inland fishing uh, resources and so on and so forth. This can bring, you know, not only fishermen, but also that people associated with the fishing, you know, fish uh, value chain can be wealthiest to people in the country. Why Assam should become a cancer capital because of the fall, uh, formalin laid, uh, you know, you know, uh, fish, you know, it has to be removed. So I, it is today is, is this very important presentation, Dr. Silveraj. I'm very happy with your open talk. And let us join together and let us promote it. Let us work out an action plan and yes. capacity building is more important. Training of, you know, this, uh, you know, fishery science graduates, officials working in government and also the, you know, the, uh, of, uh, you know, cooperative societies, uh, you know, uh, uh, members and, uh, you know, they should be trained and also that sons and daughters of the primary yes. fisher man, you know, uh, they have to be trained very effectively. Yes. And uh, this is what, and if you take it that, you know, this is, uh, you know, Amrit call by, you know, another 25 years, but I'm putting a deadline as about two to three years. Yes, yes. You know, we should do that. And the digitalized primary, you know, um, uh, Fisher Cooperative Society has to be the need of the hour value chain. And fisheries informatic network value chain is a very important thing from the university we have established this working um, WhatsApp working group. Even the Deputy Director General Fisheries Science, Dr. Jana, is also a member yeah, of the working group. And you are also a member. And uh, I'm very happy that you know today's presentation is very important presentation. We should go down to, you know, that we will take it up that, you know, you know, with the, you know, they were district level, uh, you know, managers. And uh, let us see to that how the you know we should move forward to make all the people associated with the fisheries and you know they work on processed food and you know no fish goes from the land the water uh, you know in a raw condition and uh, you know and uh, and india be the land of fisheries value chain and let the whole world eat the fish from india both inland and marine fish and also i would like to repeat it that like embida from this forum Nothing. inland fisheries development authority has to be established it is very important 
and giving a lead role for 22,000 primary primer fishery cooperative societies is very important. With this, I would like to thank you. And thank I you. would like to you know, thank all the participants who participate in the program and whoever is interested, the NGOs, the startup, and the you know the officers, fisheries officers working in the fisheries department, both in the district level and state level and central level. You know, let us join together, create an in fisheries informatics network value chain, and uh, bring in digitalized fisheries informatics network value chain, and also network fisheries health informatics along with the you know these uh, you know our you know health informatics network value chain. Very important. Artificial intelligence and blog, you know, and big data okay. analytics and blockchain can bring the fisheries nice. value system uh, as a profitable value system, and it can give a preferred career option for all the boys and girls from rural India. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Today, the is mine, master, yeah. You know, is 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 as a marriage function. He sent a message to me that you know he is not he will may not be in a position to participate okay. in the program. But he would like to have an individual meeting with you whenever the time is available. But so nice. let us have a you know startup program with an award with the Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology, with the Center for Agri Business, Disaster Management Studies, and Center for Agriculture Informatics and E-Governance Studies. Let us bring yeah, yeah, you know, you know, yeah, some sort of an digitalized reforms, you know, you know, in the fisheries sector. Thank you very much. Thank we you, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank webinar you. and leave the studio. Thank you very much. Just one minute. I'll let me click the, you know, last, you know, camera, you know, photo. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll leave it. Thanks.